Thank you for joining me today. Before we get started, I want to take a minute to tell you about a new app called Get Upside that we at the Rideshare Guy have been using to save up to 25 cents per gallon on gas. Pretty awesome. The app is completely free to use. All you have to do is upload your receipt after you buy gas and then cash gets added to your account. The cash adds up over time and you can deposit your funds straight to your PayPal account whenever you want. Some drivers are using GetUpside to save $50 per week just buying gas from their favorite gas stations. So now listen closely because this deal gets even better. I'm going to give you a short code that'll get you an additional $0.15 cents per gallon sign-up bonus. So you just download the GetUpside app from the App Store, open the app, and enter the promo code. It's WQ8JR. Now, another way you can get your $0.15 cent per gallon sign-up bonus is to visit the rideshareguide.com forward slash getupside app. That's G-E-T and then upside, U-P-S-I-D-E, and then app, A-P-P. Check it out. All right, let's start the show. Welcome to the Rideshare Dojo. If you're an Uber or Lyft driver or anyone in the gig economy, this is the place for you. With tips and techniques, interviews with passengers and industry leaders, entertainment, inspiration, motivation. Here, with over 23,000 rides, is your host, Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. Hey, everybody. Uber drivers, Lyft drivers, Instacart drivers, Postmates, Ease, Zoom drivers, DoorDash, Via, Amazon Prime, Amazon Prime Now, Uber Eats, Grubhub, all you drivers and passengers and all of us who are part of this big, beautiful gig economy, welcome. It is so great to have you here for today's exciting episode. My name is Jay Crater. Let's enter the dojo. All right. Ladies and gentlemen of the Rideshare Dojo, we have a very special guest today, somebody you may have read recently in the Rideshare Guy. Uh, he's uh, notorious for making lots of comments uh, in the forum, and uh, it's my pleasure to bring on Sergio Avedian. Did I say your name right, Serge Avedian? Dead on. Dead on. Awesome. <laughs> awesome. All right. Great. So uh, welcome. Welcome to... Uh, to the dojo. Great to have you in the dojo, Sergio. Thank you, Jake. Yeah. So, um, so Sergio, you've been driving for for three years for both Uber and Lyft, more for Uber than for Lyft. Um, you've been a contributor now to the Rideshare Guy. Um, how did how did that come about? Um, well, as you correctly stated at your opening, I used to. Uh, leave a lot of comments on certain <laughs> articles that were written on the right chair guy mm -hmm. as an avid reader. I mean, I was reader. I don't think I was a subscriber, but I would read pretty much every article that would come about. And, you know, if I needed to interject my opinion into something, mm -hmm. as you know, I have opinions. <laughs> yes. Um, I would just do it. Now, some may have come across harsh or abrasive. Um, I'm originally from the East Coast, so I call it the way I see it. Yes. You know, PC may not be my uh, strongest suit, but hey, you know, I, I don't I, have time I, for... Instead of PC, I would say you have a, a healthy dose of what I would call bristling honesty. <laughs> yes. Well, I appreciate it. I appreciate yeah. it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But in this, in this day and age, you know, it's kind of, I mean, refreshing, I guess, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. That I just voice my opinion and then, look, if you like it, you like it. If you don't like it, you know, no hard feelings. Yeah, I get my share of I get my share of criticism when I write certain articles, and you know some people like it, some people don't. But it is it is the name of the game. Yeah, I I, te um, I, I, I tell you, I don't even uh, I don't even read the comments anymore. You know, I just yeah, uh, I noticed that because initially you used to leave you know some feedback on people who comment. Yeah, it's and like you just kind of disappear now. So yeah, I mean, it's, it's okay. like it's like you know. <laughs> I, uh, yeah, just for my own mental health, I think it, it was uh, good for me to, sometimes I'll look, but in general, you know, I feel like, okay, I put this out, this is a well thought out piece, and uh, everyone can chat about it if they want. 
Uh, you know how it is. I mean, in this day and age with social media and everything else, right? I mean, anybody can say anything. Anybody. And stay, an- and stay anonymous. You know, it's like uh, you just got to figure out to pick your battles. Yeah. You know, that's what I learned writing for the Rice Here Guy for the last few months mm-hmm. and doing some, uh, you know, media or Harry's podcast. Yeah. It all started it. Mm-hmm. Um, so you asked me how it came about. Um, so from all the commentary that I have left over a period of time, um, I received an email one day from Harry and, uh, you know, he said, um, do you want to come on my podcast? Mm-hmm. I said, uh, initially it was like, uh, not a chance. <laughs> mm-hmm. Um, and then I said, you know what? Hey, why not? It's an opportunity. It's just, you know, have my voice out there. Um, I mean, I'm mostly a driver's advocate, obviously, but then look, it's the, the game is changing constantly. So yeah. I thought maybe I have something valuable to contribute Yeah, and I agreed. And then actually we met for lunch mm. one day and we discussed, we discussed how things could go. Yeah. So I did the podcast. I don't know. I, I guess he got, you know, a certain amount of interest in it. And then he said, do you want to, you know, put that in writing now, as far as what your strategy is, and you're a surge only or mostly driver. It's a different concept than most drivers apply when they drive. I said, sure. And yeah. now, after four months or five months, I guess it is. Yeah. You know, and multiple, multiple articles later, I'm still around. So, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I, must, I must be doing something okay. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, it's such a. Uh... A volatile industry, really. You know that there's always something changing, right? There's always, uh, I mean, <laughs> Dara K, you know, the CEO, you know, <laughs> makes this bonehead comment comparing uh, a, a, a autonomous vehicle accidentally killing somebody with uh, Saudi Arabia a, a accidentally killing a, a journalist. You know, it's like that's you know. Things like that. It's it's. Uh... You know, you know, you you know, Jay. You would think these people have handlers and stuff, right? I mean, like um, they would prep him before a, a massive or major interview like that. Yeah, it's just like you I, know, it's... him. You know, it's like how, I mean, how could you say something like that? Really? I know. Like, even if you're thinking about it, yeah. you just be harsh about it. There's a lot of people think what they should say, and then they pull it back because once it's out, it's out. Yeah, and. and and you're the CEO of a multi-billion-dollar global corporation, right? Yeah. So yeah. you would think they would have some people. You would think. He did say it. Yeah, it, but maybe it, not. I don't know. It was pretty but, shut. Um, it was, yeah, it that was... was a massive, that was a major, you know, no-no for me. I mean, initially, actually, to be honest with you, I, I was born in Istanbul, in Turkey. Mm-hmm. So where the journalist got murdered, right? Right, yeah. And and uh, I know the embassy pretty well. I know the city well because I left when I was nine years old. Um, so him calling a premeditated murder where the CIA and a couple of other governments said, Hey, this was like premeditated. It doesn't look right. And him saying it's an accident and then comparing it to an accident, you know, by a driverless car, Uber car in Arizona. It's kind of, it was like ridiculous, but Hey, <laughs> he got a lot of heat. He, he retracted it. Yes, he did. I guess life, life, life goes on. Life goes on. Yeah. Yeah, just uh, live TV. Things come out of people's mouths. So, um, cool. All right. Well, so great, Serge. So thanks for that um, that background. Uh, the only other thing I wanted to ask you about your background was what did you do? Um, well, I got two questions. What did you do just before you started driving? And, and what, what are you doing in addition to driving? Because you seem like a guy with a lot of, uh, you know, uh, a lot of energy and a lot of opinions, and I'm, I'm sure you're not just doing uh, driving 20 hours a week. What else? What else do you do? Yeah. Okay. Well, um, I have an economics back, uh, background. I have a finance degree from uh, Southern California University. So, uh, what happened is that initially I got hired actually two days out of school um, by a small boutique on Wall Street. Mm-hmm. Um, it used to be called Beige Halsey Stewart Shields, which nobody here has heard of, I'm sure. Um, and then I went to New York, got trained to be a, um, commodities trader. Mm -hmm. So, um, I did that for about eight months after my training and it wasn't the twin towers before they were taken down. Mm -hmm. Uh, so I have great memories of those days. And then I became an equities trader for 
at that time, Prudential Securities, or you know, a subsidiary of Prudential Insurance of America, you know, bought our company. And we became a subsidiary of them. And then I was a trader for equities and derivatives for about 17, 18 years on Wall the, Street. The Wolf of Wall Street, right here. The Wolf of Wall Street, that's right, yeah. And um, after that, in about year 2000, you retire slash quit. It really is a high-stress business. I mean, people burn out. Actually, I lasted longer than I probably should have. Mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, I trade. I still trade my own funds and for a few friends. Mm -hmm. um, but then one of my passions was golf. Uh, I had never played golf before, but I got pretty good at it pretty fast. And then um, I decided to become a uh, PGA professional. Mm -hmm. So there's, mm -hmm. a, there's a lengthy trip for that, but I accomplished it. And then I'm a class A PGA pro. I mm -hmm. teach quite a bit of golf. Oh, okay. Um, mm -hmm. Let me give like a little plug for my daughter here. Um, my daughter goes to a high school in Granada Hills where we live, and she's their number one player. I'm her instructor, and they just won the Los Angeles City CIF Championship. This year. All right. Let's hear it for uh, your daughter. What's her name? Uh, Talia. Talia. All right, Talia. Nice job. So, yeah, I'm very proud of her, and but she's also a good student at the same time. But um, So I teach quite a bit of golf, a lot of juniors. A mm -hmm. lot of college players. Hmm. I did not know. Um, so when you when you're when you're in town and you have a slice, I can fix it for you. Okay. <laughs> All right. I offered Harry. I offered Harry to fix his golf swing, but he hasn't responded yet. So <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, <laughs> anyway, so I do that. I, I trade stocks. Obviously, I have two kids. I have a you know 15 year old daughter and a 10 year old boy who uh, is a terrific little soccer player himself. So between. I'm there basically Uber. I'm their Uber driver. So I, yes, I, yes, you got I constantly am driving him here and there. You know, practice here, games there, and you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, I, about three and a half, four years ago, we were having dinner with a few friends. Um, so one of them said, "You know, you should you should write a book." I go, "What should be, <laughs> what the, what should the book be about?" He goes, "Why don't you just go drive like for Uber and Lyft in the drunk hours?" And you know what those are, right? Yeah, you know, sure, 11, of course. 11 p.m. to 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. Or yeah. do the uh, walk or shame hours. And mm -hmm. uh, he said, you should just, you should get some stories and write a book about it. Yeah. So I was like, hey, I'm bored. I have nothing to do, I guess. <laughs> so I said, yeah, why not? So I signed up. And initially what I did was immediately I went to a couple of forums. That was before RSG. Uh -huh. Um like uberpeople.net and places like that. And I, you know, direct message a couple of drivers that seem like veterans. Yes, right? yes. So, so I said, uh, let's meet for lunch. I'll buy you lunch. I wanna, I'm, I'm about to start driving. How, do, how should I do this, right? I mean, give me some pointers here. <laughs> right, right. And a couple of them were, you know, happy to meet me, and then we met. So from the onset, um, I had a leg up on the rest of the Uber and Lyft drivers, which I think today, is, you know, the, the major downfall for a lot of Uber and Lyft drivers, unlike yourself, who has figured out, obviously, certain, you know, strategies in your city. Right. And you do the co you do coaching, I'm sure, a lot of drivers. Um, I think that's what's lacking. I think Uber and Lyft wouldn't lose these many drivers yeah. if they had helped the drivers get out of the gates with some in other than download the app and go kind of a thing. You know right. I mean? Oh, yeah, for sure. Absolutely. So, so they don't, yeah, so they don't burn out that fast, right? I mean, it's all about earnings. I mean, if you can earn, yep. you know, five, six, eight, ten more dollars per hour, but you're going to drive 30 hours a week. That's 300 bucks a week. Why wouldn't you want to know some information that can help you and, you know, hang out longer as opposed to quit after six months? Right, right. And I think it would, it would help Uber. It would help Lyft. Obviously, it would help the drivers. So. Mm -hmm. What, uh, so yeah, what happened? So what happened with the book? The book, the book. I, I did drive. I, I have more stories than I care for. Mm -hmm. um, I never. I started writing it. I probably am halfway through it. Okay. And then after after driving a while, maybe I would say like a year and a half, um, I figured out that I'm literally, you know, I know we cannot say bad words on this podcast, right? So. Um, I'm, I'm the slave of like the algorithm. Mm, so yes. Yeah. I would kind of be pushed and pulled around <clears throat> and that's with knowing some strategies. That's with having a couple of mentors who I would 
constantly text or call and say, look, I'm stuck here. What do I do now? Right. We're, we're gamified. It's, we're, it's so gamified. Yeah. It, it's, yeah, it's so gamified. And then I read the book by, uh, uh, Alex Rosenblatt, you know, Uberland, right. Mm-hmm. And she's trying to talk about how algorithms are running humanity. And yes. These days, it, not just ride right share driving and everything no. from getting hot, from getting hired to healthcare to whatever it is. To what you, to what you so, see on your, to what you see on your phone when you go to Facebook or, or Instagram or Twitter or YouTube, it's, it's all, yeah, it's absolutely. all an algorithm. Yeah. It, yeah. Yeah. It's all algorithms, right? So yeah. you go to Amazon, you, you buy something. Next time you log on, they exactly know what you're going to buy. Yeah. You know, or, or you go to Netflix, watch something. And next time they go, well, you watched this last time. How come you, you want to watch it this time? And exactly what I want to watch. So yeah. long yeah, it, story short, I said, you know, I have to write now, not only about the crazy stories that I've experienced in my car, but it, it kind of hit me to the point that, you know, now I got to write something about how algorithms are running my life on a day-to-day basis as a driver. Yeah, yeah. So, it's a, it's you know. it's super interesting. I um yeah, I th- I don't think you know, so you and I we drive around, we talk to a lot of people. I uh, I learned a lot about AI and algorithms just talking to people because I got a lot of tech people that get in my car and I'm taking them to the airport, you know, and they'll start you know, sharing sharing what's going on. And I don't think I don't think more, you know, more than a few percentage of people really get, you know, how controlled our 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 civilization is by these algorithms. You know, it's it's I mean, it's crazy how you can talk about something, you know, look at some look up something in Google and within seconds, you know, you're on you're on another platform and there's an ad for it. You know, it's yeah. I mean, this this device that I carry around. Somebody knows where I am twenty four seven. You know, it's, yep. uh, it's somebody knows where you are. Somebody knows what you're willing to buy. Somebody knows you know where you travel to. Somebody knows everybody. I mean, they know everything. Yeah. So you know, I listened to um, um, prof- uh, Professor Scott Galloway, who's a professor at NYU Stern Business School, mm-hmm. um, and he has a little YouTube thing called Section Four, and he was the guy actually that called you know, how we work was going to go under in about three months. And he was correct on that one. About, um, about, the, multi- so he, about the multiplier going away? The, no, no, about we work, you know, the... the oh, we work. The, oh, oh, the... Uh, yeah, the, the off- I call it we broke now. Yeah, uh, so. The office rental place, yeah. Yeah, and mm-hmm. then he's, he talks quite a bit about Uber. He talks quite a bit about a Lyft, how Lyft is going to disappear, you know, and he has, you know, he has a good podcast like yourself mm-hmm. with uh, Kara Swisher. Um, so... I listen to him quite a bit, and he makes a lot of sense to me. And he talks about how algorithms are definitely running humanity and everything else. So, yeah, yeah. to me, you get you got to get used to it. It's the sign of the times. What are you going to do? You're not going to run away from it, or you're going to go off the grid. Well, that's not going to happen. So, you know, go with the flow. Yeah, I mean, there really isn't much you can do if you want to be a member of society. I guess you you can go off the grid, but you know, that's a whole lifestyle change right there. You yeah. know, I think yeah. I think if you understand it, then you can use it uh, a little bit. But you're right; it's uh, well. I, I try to understand it when it a, comes to my driving. You yeah. Know, specifically, when it comes to you know my rideshare driving, right? I mean, it is not that difficult to understand certain things. That, you know, look for every change it you know they do in the algorithm. I mean, I used to call it you know Uber zigs, and I have to zag now to keep mm-hmm. my earnings you know level. Instead mm-hmm. of decline, right? Yeah, yeah. And and I'm I'm successfully doing it, even up to even you know with the latest cut that we had in Los Angeles to sixty cents a mile now and twenty one cents a minute. Yeah, that was. Um, I can still I can still average decent earnings, or I would say probably as close to a double as I can come to to an average driver's earnings. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But then it takes a lot of thought, and then sometimes I think to myself. Is this really worth it? Do I have to really put this much thought into this? This is supposed to be a brainless job. I just got to get out there, turn the app on, like they say, and go. Flexibility, freedom, all that stuff. Yeah. Well, if I do what if I do what they tell me to do, which I did actually this Saturday, I'm writing an article about it. You know, driving with strategy versus without strategy. I swear to God, my blood pressure went up. I couldn't do it. I couldn't accept every single ping that they threw my way. I couldn't. I did it for like six hours, and I was like, "Okay, I'm done. I can't. I can't do this." Because you're just losing money. Right. Yeah, you're making so much so less. I, I, less like, than... I, I, made, I made half. I yeah. made half of what I used to do. Yeah. And I was like, oh, so "I go now." So now I'm thinking, there really is an opportunity actually for like 
guys like Harry or yourself or, or maybe me, um, education of the driver is paramount. I mean, it's good for Uber and Lyft as well, by the way, right? Oh, yeah, they absolutely. They spend hundreds, hundreds, of, hundreds of millions of dollars a year recruiting new drivers, right? Why don't you put these people out with some sort of leg up so they can last longer so you don't have to spend all this money to recruit new drivers? But I'm, on the other hand, I'm thinking maybe that's what they want, right? Why, though? Why? What, what? No. But, I mean, what benefit is churn? I mean, having half the people quit before six months doesn't make any sense. That's the, I mean, that I can't see I, any— I used, to, I used to think so. I used to think that, you know, I go, what business can survive with that 50, 60, 70, sometimes? I know some articles say 90% churn rate, right? Yeah. But then I'm thinking, look, the new drivers don't have a point of reference. Mm. To, them, to them, 60 cents a mile in Los Angeles is gold. Mm-hmm. Right. That's all they know. But to me, yeah. to me, it's shit. Oops, oh, I can't say that, right? No, yeah, you can you say shit, fuck, whatever. It does. Yeah, it doesn't I matter. Say that? Okay. Oh yeah. So it's to me, it's shit, right? I yeah. Mean, how can you do sixty cents a mile base ride after base ride and do more than twenty bucks an hour? It's impossible. It really mm-hmm. is, unless you deploy certain strategies and drive certain places and certain hours and obviously take take advantage of the surge not that the multiplier is gone but you know the flat rate or the, i call it the penny penny surge, penny surge. yeah because yeah. flat flat and surge in one w- sentence i don't think goes well it's like almost like an oxymoron so i was like why would you do that why how can i make how can i put 60 cents a mile together how many of those can i put together to make more than 20 bucks it's in, which i did on fri- on saturday i drove like that yeah they sent me 10 pings i accepted nine Usually, I, they send me 10 things. I accept two. I accepted everything they sent me. And I looked at my numbers. I'm like, what did I just do here? Right? I just lost money. Yeah. I put all my numbers together. I lost money by mileage. I lost money by every single metric that I can look at. Door-to-door hours, you know, app-on hours, booked hours. And I was like, come on. Yeah. Right? If 90% of the drivers are driving this way, if somebody can teach them, okay, let's not do this. Even the basics, right? It doesn't have to be, you know, Los Angeles is different than San Francisco is different than Washington, D.C. or whatever it is. But there are certain fundamentals that drivers can do that automatically can increase their earnings by at least a few dollars. If so, so, so you think, okay, I, I kind of see what you're saying, that if they have more educated drivers out there, the actual uh, supply of rides will go down because – more drivers will be turning down rides because they're not lucrative enough. So right. be, be, that's why I'm saying that's why you know when you said better yeah, who better, wants 50% right, attrition, right? Right, right. Better to bring so in Uber and Lyft wouldn't ig- want ignorance. Uber and Lyft, Uber and Lyft don't want drivers like me. I know that. Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. Sure. And they, to a point, they don't want drivers like you either, right? right. I mean, well, to, to me, it's like, why wouldn't you want that? Because now it's it's against their. I mean, there's two ways of look at this. Uber has a utilization rate for themselves, and I have a utilization rate for myself. I know my utilization rate in Los Angeles has gone down to maybe at best 50% because every street corner has like 16 cars lined up waiting for a ride, so they oversaturate the market to help their own utilization rate, which is lower the ETA for the passenger Correct. to pick mm-hmm, up. Mm-hmm. That's it. That's all they care. How fast can we pick up this passenger? Because if the passenger turns the app on, and sees that their pickup ETA is eight minutes, and they turn Lyft on, and it's five minutes, well, they're going to go to Lyft. They don't care. There is no loyalty, right? No. So yep. so to me, it's like Uber and Lyft wouldn't want, they probably do want new drivers, because the older you get, the more veteran you get, the the more knowledge you, you, you collect from people like myself and yourself. Mm-hmm. They're not going to, you know, they're not going to drive aimlessly around, and they're going to try to go for quality over quantity, because as we know, you know the quests and all these things have this dis- have disappeared to a point that it's not even worth doing those things anymore. Yeah. So yep. they're just gonna go. Hey, I'd rather do one ride for thirty bucks an hour than four rides for thirty bucks an hour. Mm-hmm. But then their Uber Uber ridership keeps growing. Lyft ridership keeps growing. So if everybody was like me, right, the passenger ETAs would probably go through the roof. Because right. I'm not gonna go take some guy. You know, at CVS. I know it's a short ride. Why would I do that? Right. <laughs> so, so that's why I think they like. 50, 60, 70, 80% attrition rate, and they rather spend the money on marketing and get the new blood in because they know after six months, once they learn the tricks, once they learn what the gig is all about, they're going to quit anyway. So that's why I'm thinking maybe they don't want the driver to be educated. Yeah, yeah, no, it could very well be. Can you speak to uh, your article came out today 
that said, uh, is Uber bringing back the original surge multiplier? Now, when did you write that? How long is that article? I mean, oh, when, I wrote when, that uh, two days ago. Oh, just two days ago. So pretty recently. Yeah. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. And did you drive today? Did did you see? No, the... I did not drive today. I did not drive today. My kids are off school for the whole week for Thanksgiving, so I didn't drive today. But I drove last Monday. Okay. Yeah. Right. So Monday, usually my setup is always the same. Look, I have a strategy. I'm not going to change it until it's you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. Um, I, I live in Granada Hills. Granada Hills is like in the suburbs of Los Angeles, north maybe 20 miles north of Los Angeles and 30 miles from LAX. Okay. Okay. So. I am not going to just turn my app on and go like most people say they do, because what am I going to find here out here? There's nothing out here, okay? Mm -hmm. It's going to probably take me to places I don't want to go. Well, for that Monday, Uber, um, three, uh, CRB, uh, consecutive ride bonus, or yeah. speak, let's say. Yeah. And they had offered me uh, between 6 a.m. and 9 a.m., uh, 3, 4, 12, 50, right? I mean that, that's that's pretty good actually. That's so, pretty. That's great. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's I've, I've ridiculous. Had, I've had as high as eighteen. I've had as high as eighteen, mm -hmm. but twelve fifty is pretty high for the last six eight months or so. Yes. So I said, you know what? Yeah, let me just go out. Let's see what happens. I was I had no other commitments. Um, so I start my day usually with a scheduled ride on Lyft. That's what I use Lyft for these days, uh, since PPZ showed up because I can't figure that thing out for my life. Um, so I usually, the day before, like if I'm sitting on a couch writing an article, reading something or doing something, you know, I have my Lyft app on. I constantly, you know, um, pull down on the app, on the schedule write part of the, uh, of the Lyft app. Right. And then sure enough, sure enough, I'll get myself, it refreshes every time I toggle down or I pull it down. Mm -hmm. um, and then I, there are plenty of people, by the way, going from here to LAX early in the morning, early flights or you know, right. So you, so you see, so you secure your first ride as a, as an airport run. Absolutely. Because, yeah, because, the, yeah. because the consecutive ride bonus, right. Is it covers, it doesn't cover all of, all of Los Angeles or my areas. There's a certain area that the consecutive ride bonus or the first ride actually has to start within it. Right. If you go out of it after the first ride, then they honor the consecutive ride. I understand. So to yeah. me, to me, it's like, okay, well, I have to be in the core core meaning close to Los Angeles, Hollywood, let's say, or Santa Monica, or, you know, downtown area, right? Right. So from here to there is 20 miles. I'm not going to dead mile just to go there to collect 1250 on, on three right, right. On a street, right? Mm -hmm. I, I watch my miles like a hawk. I mean, if I don't want, if I, I hate dead miles, so I don't want to do any of that. So the first ride is basically for me a bonus, right? So Yes, it's early. That's just 5 a.m. Yeah, people say, oh, I can't wake up early. Well, hey, listen, I have news for you. This is not a 9 to 5 gig. You got to drive, drive when there is demand and where there is demand. That's I mean, right. Uber and Lyft can say all they want. Oh, yeah, it's flexible. It's freedom. Well, buddy, if you decide to drive from 2 a.m. to 6 a.m., you're going to earn 8 bucks an hour. That's about it. So the flexibility and the freedom thing, I don't know if it's true for, or not, but... It fits my schedule. I like early morning rush hour. Yeah. You know, I have a plan. And then, you know, I've written other articles about the three P's, right? The, the first P is patience. Second P is uh, planning. You know, mm -hmm. you have to have the three P's. You, without that, you cannot just sit there and accept what they throw your way. So first ride, I start from my house. I pick this guy up. Took him to LAX. It was a nice, quiet ride. Half hour later, I'm at LAX, wide open freeways. What's the also the advantage of that? Well, wide open freeways. Uber in Los Angeles pays 60 cents a mile. Lyft in Los Angeles pays 80 cents a mile still. They haven't cut our rate yet. Right. So it's pretty good. I drop him off. Then I move up to Santa Monica area in my city and then just wait for the morning search to arrive, which is right about 6 o'clock. And then you know, I wanted to do consecutive, that 1250, that's pretty juicy, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so I pick up, I always make sure if I'm doing a consecutive ride, the first one is on a good surge ride. The rest is gravy because I'm getting the 1250 anyway. After that, actually, I tried to gun for shorties, but who knows what the algorithm is going to feed me that day. You got to take what you so, get. Yeah, yeah I got it. well, yeah, because with the 1250, look, if, even if it's a minimum ride, 262 becomes like, with the 417 out of the 1250 that I'm getting per yeah, ride, yeah. Um, it's like $7 for a two-mile ride. I mean, hey, I, I take it all day long. Um, so on the first one, I did a nice surge ride. 
and it put me in the core. Obviously, I'm in LAX. Now I'm in Santa Monica, which I'm in the core. It was a nice surge ride, short ride. And then on the second one, I got this base ping, base base rate ping. Mm -hmm. the, the, and actually, the, the screen was, I couldn't take it because now Uber has cut, the, by the way, the ping screen to 8 to 10 seconds now as opposed to Lyft's 15. Hmm. Um, I only have like eight seconds to just study the screen. Yeah. I like, I like studying the screen. I mean, I want to see what I'm getting to decline it or not to decline it. Um, so I took it because I go, look, I did my first one on a good surge ride. I'll take a base ride. So in the article that came out today, I always, I have always done this from the first day on, you know, both my mentors have told me, listen, don't trust Uber. You know, sometimes they'll throw you something as a, as a surge ride on the pink screen, but then you'll finish the ride and you'll see there is no surge attached because the passenger was outside the zone, all these shenanigans that they played mm -hmm. with you. They said, go to the passenger menu screen, take a screenshot, yep. make sure it's matching. It's ma before you, on your way to pick up, do that. So you know you have yeah, a proof. To pick. Yep. Yeah, you have proof. I mean, it's their own screenshot. What are they going to yeah. say? What is Uber CSR going to say, right? So I do that with every single ride. So on this one, base ping came in. Okay, reluctantly, I took it. By the way, I was in a surge zone. So I know when you do consecutive streaks, Uber has the tendency of feeding you some base, base rides. Um, so I go, okay, I'll take it. It was the second ride. And I went to the menu screen. To my surprise, I see a 1.6 multiplier, the old multiplier. Yeah, that's so weird. I mean, that's, I mean, I if, like, if they're making... Why if they're, is it if, on the ping screen, right? So I'm yeah. like, what is that? What is going on? Yeah. So I took, a, I took a screenshot of that, right? Yeah. I'm happy. I'm, I'm getting 1.6. But now I'm thinking the, the ping came in as, as base. Let's see if they're going to honor this thing, you know? Yeah. So yeah. I, I finished the ride short ride, like two and a half mile ride, made like nine and a half bucks. Perfect. Plus the $4 on the, you know, consecutive, the consecutive ride. Miles. It's like yeah. $6 a mile. I mean, come on, right? Mm -hmm. Awesome. So... Then, before I even finished that one, they stacked me with another ping, ping ride. Now, I use two phones, by the way. So on my other phone, I'm looking at it. It's blood red, right? Like, I'm in the middle of the core, mm -hmm. and they're throwing me base ping after base ping. Mm -hmm. So if I wasn't doing the consecutive, I would never take those rides. Yeah. There's no chance. But I'm doing the consecutive. I'm on my third leg now. Let me finish this consecutive. Let's see what's going on. So I took it as a base ping, went to the menu screen. Sure enough, another 1.6. Hmm. I'm like, hmm, two in a row. Yeah. That's interesting. So now I finished. Uh, it was another shorty. It was like three miles, 3.3 3 .3 miles. That was another eight, ten bucks, whatever it was. With the consecutive, with the first surge drive, within one hour, it was like 50 bucks. Yeah. So I go, but wait a minute now. Why are these rides not coming in as the, with the multiplier on the on the ping screen, right on right. the front, on, on on the request screen. Yeah. So I go, hey, maybe they're changing something. Maybe, you know, the algorithm is doing it this way. But as you know, they got rid of the in Los Angeles. They got rid of the uh, multiplier about two months ago, a month and a half, two months ago. So we joined your crowd now of the penny search. Now there is no penny search coming in on the ping screen. There is no multiplier coming in. But then on the background. The passenger is paying search, and I'm collecting search. However, I'm in the complete dark. I have no idea what's going on. Now, if I, I would have been happily surprised after I finished the ride if I didn't go immediately to the, you know, passenger menu and discovered that I was getting the 1.6. Yeah. So I don't know what they're doing. Are, hmm. are they going back to the, you know, multiplier? Are they testing something new? Hmm. You know, we talk I about the algorithm. Yeah, maybe it is part of the algorithm. Yeah, I won't be driving till till Friday this weekend, so I don't know. Um, I'll be in San did Francisco. You, did you encounter this yourself? I haven't driven in the last week, so okay. so no, okay. so I have not encountered it. Um, yeah. uh, sir, so we've been talking for about a half hour here, so I'm, I'm going to wrap up. We should have you back because there's a lot. I got a lot of questions, and it was great information for uh, for drivers out there. Um, Let's do it. Let me, uh, but let me ask you three questions that I ask everybody at the end of my podcast, so people. Ooh, can, I, I know about those. I, people, I'm nervous now. People okay. can get to know you a little bit better. Um, all right, what is your favorite movie of all time? Yeah, I, man, that's a tough one. That's a tough one, Jay. Besides the Wolf um, of Wall Street. 
Uh, no, I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't go there. <laughs> Wolf of Wall Street is the newer one, actually. Um, I would say uh, my favorite movie. See, that's it. I have a lot of them, but I'm I'm too old for for your crowd, probably. So not too old for um, me. <laughs> not too old for you, no. Uh, I'm gonna go with um, another one um, about the Wall Street, but it was the original one. Uh, uh, what was the name of it? You know where it's the door. The guy says greed is good. Wasn't it just called Wall Street? No, yeah, it was Wall Street. Yeah, yeah, it's Wall Street with the Michael. Original, the original, yeah, M- was the, Michael Douglas. Yeah, Michael Douglas. Yes. Yes. Yeah, Gordon Gecko. Greed is Gordon good. Gecko. Yeah. It it applies to today, doesn't it? Apply today? Oh yeah, it no, it was, yeah. that was really good with Daryl Hannah. Yeah, Charlie yeah. Sheen. Good. Mm-hmm. That's a fantastic one. Yeah, and for you youngster, you young whippersnappers out there who don't know what Wall Street is, go check it out. It is a great movie. You'll learn a lot. Very entertaining. Wall Street. All right. Um, on your phone, uh, what pictures do you have on the wallpaper on your phone? Uh, my uh, daughter and my son. That's nice. That's nice. Uh, wife, wife didn't make it there yet. So. <laughs> no. <laughs> No, I have my daughter and my son, but it changes. You know, it changes quite frequently. So, um, so it could be something else next week. I don't know. Oh, mine changes all the time. I just get inspired by different things. You know. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh, Sergio walks into the room. A lot of people are there. Your theme song is playing. What 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 would be your uh, favorite song? Your 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 song that represents you as you walk into the room. Wow! Come on now. Is this what you asked to everybody? Yeah. Think- oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, yeah. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. Um, oh, I don't know. Now you may have to edit this one. I don't know. Um, my theme song. I would, I, I look, I love um, listening to a uh, couple of different genres, right? Yeah. I love jazz. Love okay. Jazz. All right. So let's, um, let's. I, I would say, I would say something by Miles Davis. Okay. Um, All right. John, or old, old jazz, John Coltrane. Maybe a little bit of uh, Frank Sinatra. I don't know. I did it my way, maybe. That would be it, probably. <laughs> well, we sure jumped jumped around there. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, hey, I did it my way. I don't know. Look, Jay, I mean, it's, I'm too old to think about these things these days. <laughs> I just kind of try to keep up with my daughter and her Instagram feed <laughs> and, and, and Twitter and all this stuff. So I go like... Um, yeah, no, I did... You know? I did. I did it my way. Is a a, a great song. Um, yeah. When you st- said Miles Davis, man, I was uh, I was uh, ready I, I, ready to pull up uh, flamenco sketches. Or uh, yeah. there's uh, I'm a I'm a huge huge fan of uh, of Miles Davis. Uh, oh, what else do you like? How about like um, oh yeah, players? John John Col- John Coltrane is is. I, I, I mean, absolutely phenomenal. I love, um, yeah. uh, I love Supreme. Lee Everything about, uh, I, I, yeah. I mean, I love all the old guys, right? Lee Wittenauer, George Benson, Earl Clue. I don't know. You know, all these guys—they're just fantastic. So, that's it. Okay, I like it. I like it. Um, okay, great. Is there, um, is there any way anyone can uh, can reach you? Maybe there's people out there that think that guy could really teach me some things. Um, in fact, I did a coaching session before I spoke to you today. Yeah, it was a kid. In, he was a kid in Los Angeles. Kid, he was like in his twenties. He's driving the perfect car, right? Yeah. So he's driving the 2010 Prius. <laughs> I'm like, okay. He goes, I can't crack eighteen dollars. So I'm thinking this guy lives like in Timbuktu somewhere, right? Yeah. So I go, where do you, where do you live? He goes, I live in um, Sunset and Fairfax. I go like, okay, hold on a second. <laughs> That's like the absolute middle. If I lived there, I would easily gross 40 bucks an hour. And he goes, I can't crack 18. So I did a coaching session with him. Um, I think Harry has a link set up on most of my articles about coaching. Yeah. They can reach me there. They can reach me through RSG, the right share guy, obviously. And probably through this podcast now, they can reach me. Yeah. I'll put a Um, link. I'll put a link in the uh, show notes. Yeah. If anybody wants to get coached um, by Sergio or by me, um, we both work through the rideshare guy. I think it's only a hundred dollars an hour, and um, and it's pretty phenomenal. I mean, uh, 
Yeah, like you you have great results. You know, people can learn a lot just talking to talking to talking to you in an hour um and, and get get their questions answered. They don't even actually watch videos. They just can say, "All right, what what do you what should I do in the morning different?" Or, you know, "How do you get your search so high?" or, you know, "How do you get such a high per hour earnings?" So, yeah, definitely check it out and I'll put a link to that. Great. Okay, Serge walks into the room. And now, there you go. <laughs> there you go, Jay. <laughs> Sergio. All right, Mr. Sergio Avidian, thank you so much for entering the dojo. It was great. We'll do it again soon. We we like got through one question, so um, we should we should yeah we should do this like uh, like every a, couple of weeks. Yeah, at least you know? at least once a month. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely. Month, yeah. yeah. All right. All right. Thanks for entering the dojo. Appreciate it, Sergio. Thank you, Jay. I appreciate it. If you're thinking about starting an online business, definitely check out my website at nomadj.com where you can get my free ebook called What's Next? How to Do Online Work You Love from Anywhere in the World. That is nomadjay.com. I also do a daily one minute per day podcast called Nomad Daily in which I share different aspects of life. Uh, Nomad Daily with Jay Creator is available wherever you get your podcasts. People are really liking it. Check it out. You just uh, subscribe, and then every day you're just gonna it's gonna automatically load up, and you're gonna get the next episode. And you just listen for a minute to a minute and a half, and boom, you're done. And uh, it's great. I really enjoy doing that. All right, next episode, more news, interviews, all things rideshare dojo for drivers and all of us in the gig economy. I will do my best to bring you the best here in the dojo. This is Jay Crater saying thanks for entering the dojo every Monday and Thursday. Drive happy and be safe out there. Loved this episode of the Rideshare Dojo podcast? Head over to iTunes to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. It really helps and it's very much appreciated. Be sure to visit RideshareDojo.com to join the conversation, access the show notes, and discover our fantastic bonus content. Thanks for listening, and be safe out there.